One of my all-time favorite movies is Revenge, a 2017 film written and directed by Coralie Farge. Although critics absolutely loved it, the movie made a whopping $102,091. Despite its dismal financial gain, the movie won three awards and was nominated for nine others. Obviously, though, none of that has anything to do with why I love the movie. Revenge is among one of my favorites because of how incredibly empowering Jen's character is. Right off the bat, Farge leaves next to nothing to the imagination with regards to Jen's sexuality. At the start of the film, we are constantly inundated with shots of Jen's body. She's also a mistress to Richard which has traditionally never been considered a great role throughout film history. Further, the first time we see her, she's sucking on a lollipop a la Lolita, Stanley Kubrick's infamous 1962 film. The message is clear. Jen is a sexual object. However, what begins as a sexy getaway movie quickly becomes much more when Richard leaves Jen alone in the house with Stan and Dimitri. The former ends up raping Jen, while the latter secludes himself to his gluttony. Things become even worse for Jen when, after Richard finds out what's happened, he tries to convince Jen to forget about it. Okay, you're fucked up big time. But you're so damn beautiful too, it's hard to resist you. Come on, Jen, they'll come and apologize. And, and we'll she comes back with you a threat. You call goddamn helicopter, I'll call your wife and tell her everything. <laughs> Obviously that doesn't go so well. Richard and his friends chase her to the edge of a cliff, and... <sighs> Here is where our tale really begins. What began as a sexy romantic drama has now become a rape-revenge film. Rape-revenge films have a long Hollywood history. From The Last House on the Left, to I Spit on Your Grave, to The Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. Enthusiasm for my recovery in next month. <laughs> Don't and there are entire books dedicated to their study. Essentially, the premise of these films adheres to the following three-act structure. Act 1. A female character is raped and or tortured and or left for dead. Act 2. The character survives and rehabilitates themselves. And Act 3 the character takes revenge against their rapist. Now that Jen has been pulverized by a tree, Richard and company decide to head home and just get the body later when they go out for a hunting trip. You know, like gentlemen. However, that's not quite how it happens. Jen is able to get away, and at night when the boys are split up looking for her, she makes her first kill out of the one who betrayed her by turning a blind eye to her rape. Rather poetically, Jen is able to stab Dimitri in the eye while he fails to pay attention, believing that Jen is the one in danger, and not himself. Now that she has supplies, she hides out in a cave while she takes the peyote Richard had given her to keep safe. removes the remaining branch from her abdomen, and cauterizes her own wound. The next morning, she sets off to find the remaining two men, and it's here that we return to the obscene depictions of Jen's body from the beginning. Farge is reassessing Jen's body as a tool, rather than an object revealing that she set up the overt sexualization in order to deconstruct it, to show that all women, regardless of how sexual they are or not, are strong, capable beings. Jen is next able to track down Stan, who betrayed her by raping her,
and although she is able to shoot him, Stan almost manages to get away. However, he steps onto a large piece of broken glass, in a sense, bringing his impending death upon himself. Similar, say, to how Richard argued that it was Jen's own sexiness that brought about her rape. Jen is able to then track down Richard, the one who betrayed her by failing to right the wrong done to her. She shoots him in the stomach before the two chase each other around the house. Richard manages to knock Jen out with his shotgun before strangling her. However, just like Richard made Jen's rape all the worse in the aftermath, Jen is able to get away by shoving her hand in his stomach wound, exacerbating his own pain. She then manages to get the gun and shoot Richard in the chest, ending the film. There's so much more I could dig into with this movie, from the depiction of men to the makeup and costume design, but for now I'll leave it at that. So if you haven't seen Revenge, which according to the box office I'll assume you haven't, go see it for yourself and feel free to tell me how much you loved it.